Uh, my name is Paul Hodes. I live in Shrub Oak, New York. Um, my daughter Lisa is 14. She has AHC. She was diagnosed at approximately 18 months old. And my wife Renee Hodes uh, is also involved a lot in uh, the AHC Kids Foundation. I am active on the fundraising committee and my wife Renee is on the board of directors. Um, I've been active for about four years on the fundraising committee and my wife just recently, I'm going to say April of this year, uh, was elected to the board of directors. And the reason we've gotten so involved, pretty simple, we're trying to help my daughter and the rest of these kids around the world who are affected with this uh, rare disorder. Um, and unfortunately, one of the big, the big obstacles we face is trying to fund research to help these kids out. And uh, being there's only 300 and some odd children in the U.S. and approximately 850 worldwide, we don't get much help from uh, corporate funding, government funding. So it's basically up to us parents to go out and be advocates for our children. So uh, it's a twofold issue. You know, one is fundraising and the other is raising awareness. And I believe they go hand in hand because uh, the more awareness you raise, I believe the better it's going to help you um, in raising funds. And in the past six months, uh, we've had a news story done on News 12 of Westchester. And we've had two articles done, uh, local papers in our county. And uh, we've gotten great response. We've, uh, the town has been very supportive, a lot of people volunteering. And that's how you maximize your fundraising efforts is get friends, family, uh, and people in your uh, community to help out. I, I think it's very important. Um, actually, this year we've on course, I'm going to say, we have 14 confirmed fundraisers that we've done or are going to do between now and the end of the year. And I'm still working on a couple of others. Um, we have a couple of uh, projects where we're getting a lot of help throughout the community. And, you know, it's, it's so important to uh, network, get the word out, because uh, ultimate, ultimately one of my goals is hopefully we can get someone to be a spokesperson for uh, our children. And uh, it's sad to say, but, you know, you look at... Uh, Parkinson's disease, and if it wasn't for Michael J. Fox, you know, how far would they have gotten? Maybe they would have gone far, maybe they wouldn't have, but it, I, I really believe a spokesperson is key in achieving our goal, because um, that would open up so many other avenues for us. Uh, corporate sponsorships, uh, donations, entertainment industry, um, even political possibilities. Uh, it, it's just an avenue I think that needs to be pursued and that's really what we're, what I'm striving for. So it, it's a three-prong attack, if you will. Raising money, raising awareness, and, and getting someone uh, on board to help us uh, worldwide get some uh, attention to our cause. Back when she was first diagnosed, um, it was AHC, alternating hemiplegia of childhood. It, you know, they told us it's a rare neurologic disorder. There's only, and this was approximately 12 years ago, there might have been 
it might have, if I remember, it was a little over 100 kids in the country, and it was probably less than 600 worldwide. There was no mention of specific genes or any treatments. The only relief at the time was, um, which I believe still holds true today, was flunarazine. But since then, we, there are other uh, medications. Now, a, a lot of kids have uh, epilepsy associated with it. So it's definitely expanded in the past 12 years. And we hope to keep expanding it. Um, and again, this goes back to being able to raise awareness, get more doctors on board. Um, now we have so many universities across the country and across the world. I mean, I'm not as familiar what they're doing overseas, but I know uh, the United Kingdom has a lot going on. I know uh, Siggy is very involved, Australia. So it, it's definitely a growing effort, and uh, that's what it's going to take to hopefully get more people on board, more doctors. I mean, I'm a big believer. Two heads are better than one, and three are better than two. So hopefully we can just keep raising the bar and uh, eventually help our kids and uh, find a better treatment and eventually a cure. Uh, Lisa, her biggest issue is the dystonia. That affects her the most. Uh, and you start talking to other parents around the country, around the world, and uh, it's it's so strange how I'm finding when a lot of these kids, and Lisa included, when they were young, they wouldn't get as many attacks, but they lasted longer. Like one attack would last five, six days, she'd be fine for a little bit, and then all over. Now she gets them much more frequent, five, six times a week, but they don't last as long. Maybe a couple hours, an hour here, an hour there. And also, when she was younger, she used to suffer more from the paralysis, but it seems to have changed over to where she's suffering occasional paralysis, but it's definitely more the dystonia is what, what affects her. And uh, I'm finding with quite a few parents, it seems to be a trend. So hopefully this is, maybe they can link something to that pattern and uh, hopefully it'll help them out in their research. Well, I gotta say, we, I mentioned we live in New York. Uh, we pay a lot of taxes and I, I gotta say, we get great services because when you start talking to people around the country and you know questioning how do you handle this how do you know what services do you get and when we mention the services we get people are amazed at how much services we get because uh the amount of therapy she gets uh the schooling the busing just all around i mean we we feel she gets great services with Definitely happy with uh, what we're getting as far as uh, help for her. It seems to be more frequent. Uh, the severity of the attacks vary. I mean, there's definitely a trend. And again, you know, you talk with other people, it seem to be the same triggers. But with Lisa, the biggest trigger is by far weather, severe, especially the, the heat, the summer, and excitement. Those seem to be the two biggest triggers. And uh, the one good thing, I guess, even though they are more frequent, is that she is able to communicate and 
maybe not a hundred percent of the time, but quite often warn us, you know, point to her neck or say my neck and, uh, okay, we know, okay, time to get out of the water or time to go inside or, uh, time to get away from the crowd. So that, that's a positive, you know, and, uh, it may not alleviate the, the attack, but it definitely lessens it. So, uh, that, that, you know, not everything's a negative. So that, that's been a positive, but unfortunately they are more frequent. They just don't last as some last long, some don't, but nothing, uh, Whereas in the past, they used to last days or weeks. Now it's usually minutes or hours. So that, that's a positive. Sometimes, maybe twice a week, she will get an attack where she can't hold herself up. She has to be carried from point A to point B, if need be. And uh, those are the ones that scare you because now she's at risk for injury. Whoever's with her, me, my wife, her aide, her uh, monitor in uh, the school increases the risk for injury for, you know, everybody involved because unfortunately when she gets these severe attacks, she can't hold herself up. She can't walk from point A to point B. Um, and, and basically she's dead weight and... Uh, she needs to be in a safe spot, a couch or a carpeting, you know. It, so it, it, it gets, some of them get urgent. Fortunately, not all the time, but, you know, one time is one time too many. Very, very. And here's where being a parent is, you have to make decisions. And I know me and my wife discuss it. Nobody wants to give their kids medication all day, you know, every day. And uh, we try not to, I mean, she has her regular medicines that we give her every day. And then we have a spray that the doctor just prescribed where if it's severe, he said, you know, give her a couple of shots. And uh, this is where you got to use your judgment and... Uh, we're, we think we're doing the right thing. When it's only very severe, we'll give it to her, and it works. But, you know, there's a couple of different factors. You don't want dependency on it. Uh, you don't want building an immunity to it. So uh, that that's a tough uh, individual de decision, is how much and when, when to use the uh, medicines. Lisa's been known to wander in the middle of the night. Uh, and again, that goes in streaks. It'll happen. That'll happen maybe two, three times in a week. And then it won't happen for another month. She likes to make phone calls in the middle of the night, uh, text, midnight snacks. But for the most part, she... She sleeps through the nights. She's pretty good about it. I mean, there are like emotional issues that some people deal with. Um, that, I, and what I mean by that is, um, and it, this is where I have trouble sometimes. I'm flat out honest. You know, it's tough when you go to an amusement park. And, you know, you want your kid to be a kid, and she's 14, and she can't do what most 14-year-olds do. So when you bring her to the kitty section, and now she's at the point where she's too big to fit on the kitty rides, you know, how do you explain that to your daughter, you know, who wants to go to the park once in a while and... Uh, wants to be able to swim and and she understands she can't do what most kids do but it hurts it probably hurts the parents more than it hurts the kids at some time so that that's a motivating issue motivating factor that 
something I'm dealing with, and uh, it's 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 tough though. It it's definitely tough on the parents and the kids. I mean, let's not be selfish. It's uh, something to watch them sit by the side of a pool and there's 20 kids in the pool and they can't go in because they know something bad's going to happen to them. And I guess that's the heartbreaking part and that's what gets you, gets me wanting to do what I'm doing, which is fundraise, raise awareness and help these kids.